Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rydale series, 115 parishes covering a huge area of North Yorkshire between York and Scarborough. It's a beautiful area, so let's have a look at it. Welcome back to Rydale again, everybody, and to another new area of the district. Here we are just to the southeast of Moulton, and we're going to be working our way towards the Yorkshire coast. This is a lovely little place. It's taken me quite a while to get here, though, this morning because some of the roads leading towards this village are quite difficult to drive on. You'll see what I mean as we journey around the parish of Kirby Grindelithe. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Kirby Grindelithe, Church Farm on the Crane Valley Slope. Here we go with another run in the former North Yorkshire district of Rydale, and we start in the parish of Kirby Grindelithe. If you've been following the East Riding series, you'll already be familiar with some of the landmarks here, and with the area this sits in. If you haven't, here's what to expect. Kirby Grindelithe lies in the Great Walled Valley, and running through that towards the North Sea at Bridlington is the Gypsy Race. It's a winterborne stream which dries up in the summer months, but in the winter it runs fast. Kirby Grindelithe is the first parish through which the stream passes, after rising in the hills west of Duggleby, a secondary settlement within the boundaries. Kirby Grindelithe is a rather odd name, I'm sure you'll agree. The name of the village is derived from Old Norse. Kirby means village with a church, whilst the Grindle element is a distortion of Cranedale, meaning valley with cranes. Lithe means slope. It's great when it all gets thrown together, isn't it? The Cranedale part of the name is referenced here thanks to the Cranedale Centre, a residential field study centre right in the middle of the village. And speaking of fields, there's loads of them around here. In this video we'll learn a bit about a company called ADAS, who know a thing or two about farming. Let's go! Welcome to Kirby Grindelithe, everyone. This village sits in the Great Walled Valley, and given that, the regulars should be familiar with our first landmark. This is the Gypsy Race, the Winterbourne stream which snakes its way across the landscape in these parts. It's shallow here because its source isn't far away. It's in the hills just west of Duggleby, a hamlet also within the parish boundaries. It's nothing like what it becomes further downstream. It runs parallel to an unnamed road upon which a good quarter of the modest handful of dwellings here are located. This building is a former Wesleyan chapel described as neat in Bulmer's directory in 1892. It was erected in 1886 at a cost of £470 on a patch of land which belonged at the time to Sir Tatton Sykes. That's not surprising given that Kirby Grindelith's southern neighbour is the parish of Sledmere. On the end of the road is a house called The Gables, one of six listed buildings in the parish. This too had connections with Sledmere. Made of a pinky orange brick, it was built in 1880 by John Birch for the Sledmere estate. It was the estate office and manager's house. These days, that's in Sledmere itself. 
Right in the middle of the village is a former farm complex that's been converted into a field study centre. This is the Cranedale Centre, which takes its name from the area Kirby Grindelith sits in, the Crane Valley. Grindelith is a distorted and amalgamated version of the words Cranedale Slope or Crane Valley Slope. The Cranedale Centre has been here since 1983, offering a comprehensive selection of fieldwork courses for both British and overseas students of all ages. Thousands have walked through its doors since its inception, and many have been back multiple times. Their website is linked below. Now we're on the road that bypasses Kirby Grindelith to the north. To the east it leads to West Lutton, so we're going the other way. Next up is the church dedicated to St Andrew. The site on which this stands once had a Saxon building, and the current church retains bits of that. Most of this one is distinctly Victorian, the result of a lavish rebuilding by G. E. Street for Sir Tatton Sykes. It's on the Sykes Church's trail. The main reason to visit this one is the superb mosaic which takes up the entire west wall from floor to ceiling. It was created in 1893 in the style of a richly coloured mural. So as ever, I was hoping that this one would be open, but there's a dirty great padlock on that gate behind me, so it's clearly not. Never mind, never mind. So we'll walk through the churchyard now, past this big tall cross, which I can see in front of me here. I'll just show you that cross right there. And out of the lit gate, stone lit gate, down there, down these steps, and then around the rest of the village. There's not much more to Kirby Grindelith, but there are two other hamlets which fall within this one's parish boundaries, so we'll drive around those as well after we're done with the walk. Out of the churchyard now, we're heading for the Gypsy Race again, but before we have a look at that for the second time, let's talk a bit about the Village Hall. This used to be the Village School. It's a small building, made of brick, which was erected in 1878 for the accommodation of 50 children. It was never designed to be big. Now it's the main communal venue, not just for Kirby Grindelith, but also Duggleby too. The sound of rushing water will meet your ears here. That's all down to this pretty little waterfall on the Gypsy Race as it rushes off the hills towards the sea at Bridlington. There's not much more to the village now, it's just housing. There are no further listed buildings left on the route. Three of them were in the churchyard. The other two are farmhouses in far-flung corners of the parish at Thirkleby Grange and Kirby Manor. So with that in mind, we've only two other things to catch. One is the old phone box, which doesn't appear to be in use for anything currently. It's in a bad state of repair under a tree. Looking a little more inviting, however, was an information board over the road. These are always well worth a read, and they're plentiful in the Great Walled Valley. Okay, so uh, we haven't seen a parish notice board, but I assume this is kind of like one. We'll leave a card just here, because it seems to be one of those places that uh, people come to to read all the information. And there is some good information on this board as well. Several panels to it. This one tells us that the Gypsy Race is the most northerly chalk stream in England. Well, I dispute that because, of course, we met the most northerly chalk stream in England, allegedly, back in Kirkburn in the East Riding series. So it seems like it's a little bit of a, um, <laughs> a, little bit of a, a competition between the two. But, uh, you know, either way, the chalk stream, the Gypsy Race is absolutely gorgeous and everyone should come to Kirby Grindelith to check it out. We haven't seen the last of it, actually, because over the next couple of episodes, we will, we, we will be seeing it again. And the reason for that is because the race goes eastwards towards the Yorkshire coast, which is what we're about to do now. We're going to hop into the car and move on to the next one. But before we actually do that, we have to complete this episode. There are two other settlements which fall within Kirby Grindelide's boundaries. One of them is called Duggleby, and that has a very interesting hill. Let's go and find that. So this is Duggleby, which sits just west of Kirby Grindelithe. Despite being defined as a hamlet, if anything, this is the biggest settlement in the parish, and it's where over half of its population live. Duggleby was, until 1935, a parish in its own right, before it was abolished and merged with Kirby Grindelithe. The village itself doesn't have a lot to shout about. It's mostly housing, and a lot of it is quite modern, surprisingly. However, don't let this put you off. Duggleby is worth a visit if only to see the massive burial mound to the north of the place. Known as Duggleby Howe, it's one of the largest round barrows in Britain, and one of four such monuments in this area. 
they're collectively known as the Great Barrows of East Yorkshire. It consists of a dome-shaped hill, the base of which is 120 feet in diameter. The top of the barrow was truncated at some point in the past, leaving an almost level platform with a diameter of 47 feet. On that, there was once a medieval-type post mill. Talk about taking advantage of your surroundings. It's not the easiest thing to see or film, as I'm about to show you now. Okay, so Duggleby Howe is not the easiest thing to find a spot to get a view of it from, but I found one here in the entrance to a field, which I'm not going to walk across because obviously it's private property. Duggleby Howe is the mound that you can see in the middle distance, just there. Okay, and it's quite prominent. There are places on the road from Kirby Grindelith where you can get a better view of it, but whether or not the camera would pick it up from the distance, I don't really know. But there you go, that's Duggleby Howe. If you're ever driving through this area and you see that big mound, now you know what it is. And it's quite impressive, to be honest with you. It stands out for a mile. It's fantastic, brilliant. I love finding things like that. Now, let's go to the other little hamlet, and this one is going to be a bit difficult because I'm not totally sure whether or not I'm actually allowed in it. We'll soon find out. Okay, it didn't take long to find out the answer. The answer is no, I'm not because it's a private road and there's a sign here that says no access without permission. Now the place in question is called High Mothorp and as you can see it is farmed by Alban Weiss Farming Limited. Now up there there's something called ADAS, A-D-A-S which is important in this area and I would have liked to have seen it myself however I'm not going to be able to actually get up there. You can walk up here, I'll just make the point here because you, there's a, a bridleway which runs the length of this road and it does take you through High Mothorp and onto a different road but it's a heck of a long way and there's absolutely no way I'm doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a few pictures pictures of High Mothorp and of ADAS and tell you all about both of them. High Mothorp is a former hamlet which has been converted into an arable research centre. It's run by ADAS, a UK-based independent environmental consultancy which conducts science-based research throughout the UK and internationally. High Mothorp is a mixed arable and livestock farm covering 437 hectares, 97 of which are managed organically. Laboratory and glasshouse facilities are located on the site, as well as a weather station which provides data to the Met Office. High Mothorp is also the home of ADAS's Pest Evaluation Services, which processes approximately 4,000 soil and plant samples annually to determine pest and disease levels. ADAS's customers range from small rural enterprises to major corporations, government departments and agencies. They operate from 16 principal sites throughout the UK. The business employs over 400 permanent staff and a further 250 on contingent terms. In farming terms, they're a big deal. Folks, that'll be that for Kirby Grindelide, probably one of my favourites so far in Rydale. The big open skies and lack of any great amount of traffic is always something that will sit well with me. Next week we'll be in a slightly busier village, but another that still has all the rural charm that we're used to in North Yorkshire. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.